Okay, so before I left, I bought a new wiring harness and a set of lug nuts for that trailer out there. And I seem like I remember that I said, I'm going to put these inside the trailer so I'll know where they're at when I get back. But they're not there. Boy, I just sure do get aggravated with myself sometimes for doing that kind of thing. I was pretty sure I was being very clever. I'm going to put them in a place where I absolutely could not not know where they were. But... That didn't work, did it? No. I wonder where I put them. Well, I guess this gives me an opportunity to do a little walk around. See what I can find in here. See if I can figure out where they're at. Oh, the joy. Well, I did find them, and I did set them over in some place where I couldn't help but run across them. But it just wasn't where I thought it was. Here's the... I actually found this one, too. This is one I... I got boxes of old wiring and this is the leftover piece from something I had a long time ago but this is the new one that I bought just for that trailer which got both ends on it and then these are the lug nuts and then this is the tag plate I found this too I used to wear this thing when I drove this car it was cool and I lost it for a long time and I finally found it the other day it was in a barrel full of old hats and stuff I think found it somewhere anyway so I've got all the pieces I need to do this so I suppose I could shimmy up under the back of the car here and uh, run those wires for the plug first then bring the trailer over and run the wires for the other end <clears throat> I'm going to want to look at that plug how to crank up the Dodge too because she's been sitting here uh, also without being started since October she always cranks right up she's an extra good one yeah that's what I thought so the plug that'll come out of the car will be the one with the with this all covered in the on the ground exposed so this is how I generally do wiring I got one of these simple little test lights and I've the only thing that's about the only thing I've ever used electronically for car stuff electrical stuff not house current but anything 12 or 6 volt I'll hook the little end of that onto the negative side and I've already uh, clamped this red hose over here hook that right over the top of that done. I've already hooked that red hose to the positive side so it should be when I touch when I touch this point to the end of this wire this should light up I'll paying attention y'all see that lighting up there now so now I know that my light works so if I take that ground in disconnect it from the battery and I come back to the back of the car where I'm going to be working in and I connect it to a piece of metal like for example this trailer hitch ah. <clears throat> and then I go back to that wire and that's why I have this long wire from the battery is that I know this wire is hot now so if this ground is good and this wire is hot it should be that if I touch it should be that if I touch the point of that to the hot red wire the light comes on now there's no light there which means that this ground is not good so I need to wiggle it around until the ground is good now it is you see that lit up? So all I had to do is wiggle that until I found the right place. Now that I know that, I can test one of the wires on the car. Now I just happen to have a wire that's hanging out right here. I used to have a, a, a running light on here that looked like an old carriage lamp. And 
I, when I unhooked it, I just tied that wire in a knot, but I'm, I know when I turn the lights on, the running lights, driving lights, that that's gonna be hot. I'm gonna test that by going up here to the car and turning on the running light, not the headlight. Now, these lights are lit up, and this light that I just pointed at should light up my test light when I touch it to it. If I haven't lost my ground, which it just did. You see that lit up? So what I can do now, I can actually use this wire to wire the light that goes to my plug that's gonna be my running light. But I can use this same process for all of these lights, turn signals and brake lights, so that I can wire them all up properly. I don't need for that light to stay on while I'm doing that. So I'll just come up here and turn off that light while I do the wiring. Now the next thing I do is figure out which plug on this is going to be the running light. So a couple ways I can do that. One is just to go right by this. It says number one is ground. So that's going to be the white wire is ground. Number two is tail light and left to left and right side of the tailor. Number three is going to be the left turn. Number four is going to be the right turn and the stop light. Um, so, I'm trying to remember, do I? Yeah, I have these wired. I need to check that. I need to check, make sure I've got this wired so that the brake lights come on and I put a diode in this unit years ago to make sure they both run off the same line. And the best way to test that is to put a turn signal on And come back here and I can see that I got light blinking on the left side now when I hit that brake and I can do that by taking my broom reaching it through the steering wheel here and mashing the brake pedal when I mash that brake pedal I should have a light not only there but there so let's mash that and these lights came on and the one down under should come on but I can't see it I may have wired this might be wired a little weird but you may not be able to see it unless I cross that stick on something I don't know how I can see it I got a mirror I forgot oh, I forgot I set my garage up I can see my tail lights in my mirror, so it should be when I mash this that that comes on. Now those are those are all the brake lights. And then when I put the other side on, we're gonna get the same thing. We've got all those brake lights. When I mash it, all of that's gonna light up. So Now I believe that the bulbs in the lights that Rusty sent me are single element bulbs, which means I can run them for, and I don't know if they're bright or dim. I'm gonna have to take those bulbs apart. I'm gonna have to take that off anyway. Let me turn this off. I'm gonna have to take that off anyway on one side to get the tag plate on there but I believe they're single element bulbs now if they are I can run the turn signals and the brake lights which run off the same bulb on those Model A lights and I've got some other little lights that I was playing with in here some time ago uh, that I can use for running lights I actually had them stuck up on that trailer and they look pretty nice. 
let me uh, do one more thing. Now, I, I was testing this, but I want to check this against my car. And it's probably not necessary, but sometimes I do things that ain't necessary just to make sure that I get it right. So what I'll do... One of these days, as I get older, I'm going to have to get me a better door. What I can do is take this car double check the light locations against what it says on the box just to make sure not that it's going to matter so much on this vehicle on that vehicle because because I'm probably only ever going to pull that one trailer with it. But let's take this here. We're going to double check it. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is find a ground. Not the same as before. We'll go to the trailer here to see if we can find the ground. The rest of spot right here is probably good to have a paint on it. And According to this, I got my left turn signal on. Left turn signal should be the third wire over from the ground, so it should be that one right there. What I can do is actually I'll stick that right in there, wiggle this around until I get the ground. There we go. Got a ground right there. Alright. I'm gonna reach up for that bolt here. And now you can see that that third wire from the white is the left turn signal. And the, and the tail lights should be number two, so that's the second one from the balance here. You can see that works. So you can see that this is wired the same as that. Not that it mattered, but it's just that anytime I'm going to wire something, I'm a big fan of double checking things twice and doing it once. I like to. It's kind of like the saw man used to say on the construction site, measure twice, cut once, same idea, measure where I'm going to run my lights to, not measure, but check twice, and you don't have to wire them once, because I won't do it wrong, even if, it, even if the thing tells me that. Why are you beeping? Because I got the lights on? Yep. That's why. Okay. So we'll cut this off. I'll come back over here. I guess I might as well bring that trailer down because I'm going to put the tag thing on it. But I also want to... I uh, also want to... Look at those Model A lights. See if I'm right about them being a single filament bulb. Hold the joy. Now on these, I've got two wires that run down from here. Uh, maybe this is, maybe this does have two lights. Well, that's, that's what it is. It's got a, it's got a bulb here and a bulb there, and this one is a stoplight. So that's going to be, that's going to be 
uh, yeah, the turn signal and the stoplight. And this is going to be the who's it, what's it bulb. Uh, let's see, I ought to go ahead and put this tag plate on there. Y'all may lose your mind listening to me think out loud, but if you do, I know it out in Indiana. His uh, real name is Stevie Ray Rains, but some people call him Cutworm 59. Cutworm 59 can help you with all your therapeutic needs. Now, I've had various people tell me that the tag should be on one side or the other. I'm not sure I disagree with any of them. Uh, a lot of people have told me it should be on this side, and this side would be the side that's closest out toward, this side is gonna be the side that's closest toward the ditch. I don't see why that's a problem. Some people think it ought to be on that side because it's closer to cars that are passing me. Also, the hot rod is on that side, the hot rod. The hot rod tag is on the left side. So maybe it should be on the left side. So let's take this bulb off and put this on first. Before we do anything else, what does that need? A screwdriver or? Yeah, that's a big screwdriver, Phillips head. So let's, let's do that first. I'm going to need a short screwdriver for that. So once again, and some of y'all don't know about this, but I'm wanting to thank Rusty Acres for giving me these Model A lights. He's a good man. I like him a lot. He's been a good friend to me too. Some of y'all don't know who he is, but he's got a YouTube channel, Rusty Acres, A-C-H-E-R-S, Acres, Ake, A-C-H-E, and then R-S, like he's a guy that aches, Rusty Acres, long bolts right there, this, these wires will go through the hole on the tag plate. Now, some of y'all won't know this because you probably might not have seen the video. It's been a while since I did it, but I I ran a wire to this light and soldered it on here for a ground so that I can ground this with a wire and not depend on it to ground through the metal. Because of the paint on the body and everything, oh, this has got to go on that before it goes on this. So I'm getting ahead of myself here. Because of the paint on the body, I ran the wire that way so we're not dependent on the, the body to carry the negative current of the ground. I don't know if any of y'all understood that, but if you have any questions, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> if you have any questions, ask Cutworm, he'll explain it to you. He's a good boy that way. In fact, if you need to ask him some questions about that, if, you, if you're asking complaints, you have to send him a hundred dollar bill. But if you're just asking questions, just regular questions, he can, he won't charge you. He won't charge you to help you. But if you're complaining, he'll charge you for having to listen to you complain. I feel the same. That's the way I feel about complaints too. I don't want to hear it. Anybody got anything to complain about? Send Cotworm a hundred dollar bill and he'll handle your complaint. Uh, this goes up here, and that, and that goes in this, look here, that. Now there is a way I could find out which light is which without taking the bulb apart, and I can do that by hooking a battery to this light. I just happened to have the battery that I brought home to go back into the Chrysler sitting 
there on a roller. I can roll it back here and set it on the floor and we can light these lights up and look at them and then decide what we think. Uh, I probably won't register this trailer yet, so I won't have a real tag to go on it until we get back from Georgia because that'll be uh, another several months and there's no no point in paying money to register something so I can sit around with the tag and let the tag run down use up half an inch for something that I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be driving when we get back so yeah so I'll get that battery oh, oh just got reminded that I have a back you know uh, See that light real good, so I'm gonna move you a little closer. What I'm gonna do is identify which wire goes to what, and also which light is what. So the ground on this is this green wire. I put that green wire on it. Nope, I might be wrong. It's the yellow wire. Okay. So the yellow wire in this on this end, this yellow wire is the ground. This black wire is the running light. And if you can see, it lights up right here. And it also lights up for the tag light under here. There's a little glass window that lights up. The green wire is the brake light and the turn signal. See how bright that is? So that's how we're going to roll. So when we come out to wire this part, this will be the ground, this will be the brake light and turn signal, this will be the running light. Okay, so I don't need this for right now because I'm going to go and wire that. And then we'll, then we'll come back to this. Okay, okay. All right. <clears throat> I might want to.